Welcome back to the fourth in a series of screencasts on spreadsheets. In this screencast, we're going to expand on the idea of cell references, which we first encountered in screencast two, where we made up a spreadsheet for a grocery budget, and then learn a new trick for cell referencing that will let us do a lot more with spreadsheets like this. Now, here's the budget as we left it back in screencast two. We created this column over here in column D to show us whether and by how much we went over or under our weekly budget of $125 a week for groceries. Now we did this by going to cell D5 and entering in a formula. Here it is. Uh, C5 minus 125, uh, again here in cell D5. And then we dragged the formula down through the remaining three cells below it to apply the same formula to the three other weekly expenses. So I typed C5, and uh, that is a relative cell reference, and that means uh, that we don't mean to use C5 in every single instance that we see the formula, but rather in whatever cell is to the left relative to the cell we're putting the formula into. That means here I have C C5 minus 125, but as I drag the formula, it changes to C6 minus 125, and C7 minus 125, and C8 minus 125. Now what would have happened if instead of putting 125 into this first formula, I had put B2, which is where that number 125 is housed. After all, if I change the monthly budget, which is something I might want to do, then the weekly budget should change as well, and then the over-under amount should change. So it seems like I should be using a cell reference right here instead of just typing in 125. Well, let's try it and see what happens. First cell looks fine. Now watch what happens in my drag, though. Hmm, that's just clearly not what we want. The problem here is that when I entered B2 here, the spreadsheet thinks that this is a relative cell reference. And so when I drag the formula again, it's going to change B2 to B3, which doesn't have anything in it. And then the next one's going to be B4, which has text in it. So I don't really want to put a relative cell reference up here. I want to keep B2 locked into the same place all the time. Now a cell reference that is locked into the same place all the time is called an absolute cell reference rather than a relative cell reference. To create an absolute cell reference, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go to my, co my uh, column letter here, B, and put in a dollar sign in front of it. And then I'm going to go to my row number here, B2, and put a dollar sign in front of that. So with the dollar signs in front, that keeps the cell locked in place no matter where I drag the formula. And let's drag it again and see what happens. Now these are the values that we had before. As you can see, as I drag this time, the C5 changed to a C6, which is what it's supposed to do, but the B2 stayed in place, which is also what it's supposed to do. And the same thing happened here, and a similar thing happened here. Now if I wanted to increase my monthly budget, say by $200, from $500 to $700, all I've got to do is enter in $700 right here into B1. And then B2 changes because it has a reference back up to B1. And then all these cells over here in column D change because they refer back to B2 all the time. I'm going to change this figure back to 500 here for a moment. Everything changes back as it's supposed to. We can also use this absolute cell reference idea to soup up the uh, remaining column here in our budget. Remember, this is telling us how much money is left in our budget total for the whole month after every week's expense. Now, I created this uh, column here by first entering in 500 minus C5 over here. And what I'd like to do is replace the 500 with a cell reference to B1. So that way, if I change the monthly budget, uh, I don't have to go over here and change it again. Now, I'd, I could put... B1, but that's going to be a relative cell reference. I don't want that. I want that to stay locked in place. So I'm going to put in dollar sign right here and a dollar sign right here and enter that in. Now the next cell down uh, contained a reference to E5 up above, the amount remaining after the first week, and then the new week's expenses. And I don't want to change any of those. So now if I go back and change my monthly budget again to 700, everything works as it's supposed to. 
uh, the new amount remaining after the first week is correct, and all the other ones are correct as well. We can also use absolute cell references to do some things with mathematical functions, as we saw in screencast number three. I'm going to create a new spreadsheet, center it up, and change the view so we can all see it. In screencast three, we use spreadsheets to uh, try out three different exponential functions so we could see how the behavior of an exponential function changes as the size of the base changes. And we can do that here w as well in a slightly different way. I'm going to create a cell up here in A1. I'm just going to label it A. And in B1, I'm going to put the value of A. A is going to be the base of an exponential function. I'm going to start with 2. Then I'm going to go down uh, here to A3. I'm going to create two columns of data, one for X and input, and another for A to the X. These are just labels here. Uh, I'm going to highlight them, and up here I can center them up, and then maybe bolt face and underline them so they look like headers. Now I'm going to create a column for input data, say negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And in this column, I'd like to put A to the X. Now, that right now, A is, I, have, I would like A to be equal to 2. What I'm going to do here, instead of typing 2 to the x, as we did in screencast 3, I'm going to put equals, and I'm going to use two cell references. I'm going to refer back to here for the base. That's B1. I would like that base to stay locked in place, so I'm going to put absolute cell references here. And I'm going to raise that to this power. So this is going to compute 2 to the negative thirds, which should be 1 eighth, and that is 1 eighth right there. Now I'm going to drag that formula down. And it creates a column of data for 2 to the x. But what's nice about this is I can go back up here, and if I wanted to change this to a different base, say 1 half, just put in 0.5, that will change the column of data as well. Let's try a few more. If I change the a to 1, I get all 1s. It's not surprising. If I change it to 2.3, I get this. Change it to 2.5, I get this. And so I can play with the bases very easily and see how the behavior of the exponential function changes as well. So I can use spreadsheets to explore how different kinds of functions behave as a parameter in those functions changes, in this case the base. So the combination of relative and absolute cell references allows you to make complex and useful formulas to do all sorts of calculations in a spreadsheet. In the next screencast, we're going to depart from formulas for a bit and talk about graphics, especially charts, and the very important idea of a scatter plot. We'll see you there.